You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. I am back. Rudrance for our Black and White Sports 2. Well, we're going to talk about Deshaun Watson and the New York Jets. As always, like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. Check us out on podcast wherever you check your podcast out. All the audio from all of our videos available on podcast. Uh, so we're going to talk about Deshaun Watson, New York Jets. He's made some comments that are very eyebrow raising and shows a total lack of self-awareness as he's proceeded to call the New York Jets toxic. Wait a minute. <laughs> Which quarterback are we talking about? Are we talking about Tom Brady? No. We talking about Aaron Rodgers? No. Patrick Mahomes? No. Joe Burrow? No. Josh Allen? No. Jalen Hurts? No. We're talking about the former quarterback of the Houston Texans, current quarterback of the Cleveland Browns, who... Let's look at this headline from, uh, I believe it was back in October 14th. Deshaun Watson facing 26th civil lawsuit. In case you don't remember, that's for sexual misconduct. But he has gone out there and he has decided to label the New York Jets as toxic. <laughs> wow. The lack of self-awareness by this D-bag is astonishing right now. I mean, truly. This is the very same quarterback that how many thousands of fans, Cleveland Browns fans, in that poll that I did a video on in regards to Deshaun Watson, some 70% of the entire fan base that answered this poll we're not talking about a, a couple of thousand fans. We're talking over 15,000 Cleveland fans, and 70% of them said we'd rather have Baker Mayfield than Deshaun Watson. Why? Because of exactly what I'm showing you right here on this screen. The guy is a total and complete scumbag. A complete scumbag. But if you're a New York Jazz fan, congratulations, your, your environment... Your team is toxic, according to this a-hole. I mean, that's pretty unbelievable. That's pretty unbelievable. But I guess to do what he has been alleged of doing to all of these women, keep in mind the New York Times said upwards of 100 women, some 60-something women, that they could, they could actually attach names to that this guy had commit, allegedly, sexual acts during massages. Think about that. Oh, this is nuts. Uh, let's get to this. This is JetsXFactor.com, but this is by way of all kinds of websites at this point. Everybody that can be used as a source is starting to pick this up. Deshaun Watson calls Elijah Moore and Jets' situation, quote, toxic. A toxic environment, okay? You literally held the Houston Texans hostage because you didn't want to, wait for it, you did not want to play for a white coach. And the Jets are toxic, okay? Okay. The honeymoon period between Elijah Moore and the Jets didn't last long after a promising rookie season that saw Moore eclipse 500 receiving yards and six TDs. The Ole Miss product saw a drastic decline in production in year two. But it wasn't just production that was a problem between New York and a 2021 second-round wide receiver. After a Week 6 win that saw the Jets beat Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, Moore took to Twitter to discuss his unhappiness with his involvement in the Jets' offense. You want to talk about a la the lack of self-awareness? Your team just beat, say it out loud, Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. And you go after the game and decide to bitch about how little you were involved. <laughs> I mean, wow. Wow. If I say what I really want to say, I'll be the selfish guy. You are the selfish guy. 
We went in grateful, huge blessing. Oh, no. You don't get to do it like that. And everything be okay. All I ever wanted, bittersweet for M, but I'll be solid, so I'll just stay quiet. Just know I don't understand either. He had zero targets in that game. I can see why. I can see why. With that attitude, I'd never throw the ball to you. Continuing a rough start to a year for a wide receiver expecting a breakout season. After that game, Moore had a profane outburst against then-offensive coordinator Mike LaFleur, who ended with a disgruntled wide receiver demanding a trade from the Jets. His team, which has struggled for years, beat Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, and he took to Twitter to bitch about it afterwards. Think about that. Speaking in a Twitter space, Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson addressed his relationship with Moore and the chemistry he's trying to build with his newly acquired wide receiver. Oh, man. Of course Deshaun Watson's going to love this guy. But what he said about New York, and I don't know. I haven't looked at the schedule. The schedule hasn't come out yet. Uh, I don't know if the AFC East, uh, if they will play the Cleveland Browns this year. But, boy, if they play them in New York, New York Jets fans, you should let Deshaun Watson know it. Quote, a lot of people think that it starts on the field, but it's really that chemistry outside the field, Watson said. As a quarterback, you've got to know how everyone reacts in certain situations, and you know with me having a guy come from, you know, call it how it is, a toxic situation from New York, I've got to make sure that he's mentally straight and he's motivated. And that's what he has been since he's walked in the building. He's motivated, ready to work, asking me questions. Wow. Okay. So, you literally just called the New York Jets toxic after you held the Texans hostage, wanting out of town because you didn't have a black quarterback, they hired a black quarterback, and you still wanted out of town, so you're a liar. That's not why you wanted out of town, which is pretty repugnant and racist to begin with, but you don't get how toxic that is now, do you? Or which part of 26 civil lawsuits for sexual misconduct do you not get is actually toxic as well, Deshaun Watson? There was multiple articles on this, and one guy said, he could be the most hated athlete in all of sports. We remember when he came back, the Jacksonville Jaguar fans absolutely destroyed him when he took the field. I mean, destroyed him. This is it's pretty wild to mouth the words toxic about any other team, frankly, and or situation after how toxic this guy is. This guy served an 11-game suspension. By the way, this shows you exactly how weak Roger Goodell is because they backed off of this and let this go to negotiation, blah, 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 because he stepped in and said, no, six games is not enough. It's got to be the full season. And then Goodell backed off of that and let it be negotiated down. This guy should have been gone for at least the entire season. Absolutely. And I can't believe he's got the nerve to go in and call any, any other locker room situation toxic. Really? You walk in the locker room and it becomes toxic. The entire locker room is now toxic. You walk in, you pollute it for crying out loud. It is unbelievable how some of these athletes... Whew, no self-awareness whatsoever. None. Maybe this is one you should have kept your mouth shut on. Just let it go by, considering the situation. You know what? Maybe I shouldn't comment on this. No. I'm going to go and label the New York Jets as toxic. All right. And all the while saying that about a receiver that ran his mouth and was mad he didn't get the damn ball after defeating Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Again, who's really toxic here? I'm sure the Jets could not wait to get this D-bag out of town. 
and Elijah Moore and Deshaun Watson match made in hell for crying out loud tell me what you think black and white sports 2 supporters Deshaun Watson is a certified scumbag clown is he not wow man peace I'm out till next time thanks for watching the show be sure to like comment and subscribe be sure to tune in next time on black and white sports.